Hi, I'm Christopher Hine, and today we're going to be giving you a few details for um, the disarm. So one of the patrons on here asked me um, to give a couple details about my Kodagaish disarm and how it works. So I'm going to give you some close-up video on it and kind of explain in a little more detail how my Kodagaish disarm works. I'm going to get Josh out here. We're going to go to work. Josh? So this video is for Paul. Paul asked for some more detail on my uh, disarming technique with Kodagaish, uh, and he said he was kind of running into some trouble. Um, let me give you the basic form. I got three different kinds of knives here to kind of give you three different um, ideas of what's going on. So um, this is a knife that I use. Um, I actually, I bought one of these years ago, and then I made a whole bunch more myself because I think they're really good for training some aspects of knife stuff. So uh, let's get a close up here. So um, this knife has a really big, go ahead and close your hand around it. This knife has a really big pommel. And what's nice about it is when you're just training this stuff, it pretty much will always give you a grip on this side of the knife, right? So it's good to sign and get guys working initially with it. Even if he chokes up quite a bit on that sucker, uh, this, way. Uh, this way, yeah, get rid of that pommel. See, there's still pommel and like, look, that's a, how does that, how comfortable does that and feel in your hand? Good, no. Right, so almost everyone's gonna hold it right about here, which gives this guy a lot of room to work with here. And we'll talk about when that disappears here in a second. Okay, so when I'm in Kodagai's position, I'm over here and I have my basic grip lock going on by placing my hand over his hand. Now understand this came from, uh, suppression and then I caught this hand like this and now I've closed his hand around it. Now I have to have that to keep him from switching, right? And once my hand's there, even if he does open his hand and do a switch, that's fantastic. We call this the Mike Douglas because one of my students, Mike Douglas, um, uh, used to do that all the time and it was irritating, but it's, it's a fantastic technique. So my hand goes right here in front. Okay, now when I'm going to do the disarm, this hand is gonna mimic his hand as much as I can, right? So I'm gonna slide it in here just like his hand is. I want him to be the same, right? So that's identical to his hand. This hand is gonna be opposite opposite his hand, like a exact mirror image of his hand, right? Just like this. So as he's there, I'm like this and I'm mirror image. Then what I want to do is get as much of my ring finger and pinky finger over this uh, pommel as I possibly can. So I'm really grabbing down there. Okay. And then I'm going to pull this side and push this side. And what's happening here, and I don't know how close this is, but um, I'm, I'm literally pulling the knife right out where he's grabbing it right there. So where the opening of his hand is, is where I'm working it. So I'm not really worried about trying to apply a coat of guys as we know it to hurt the wrist but I'm just worried about turning the hand this way. And this will automatically turn the wrist to that position anyways, right? So I don't have to worry about that. But a lot of times when I tend to think about just doing the Kota Gaish, what happens is I lock his hand onto the knife better and it's hard for him to let go. And that's not what I want. I want him to give up the knife. So with this knife here, I'm gonna grab as much here as I can, as much here as I can. I'm pulling on this side and I'm pushing on this side. And you get a super sweet disarm with that. It comes out really, really well. Okay, so that's with this knife. All right, let's go to the kind of knives you guys are using. Uh, so Paul's group's using these Quan knives, which I use here, I like them. Um, they have a very, very small handle here, right? So it's not a lot of handle to get. But still, I can get in here on this side. And instead of relying as much on this part of the pull, which feels really, really good, I'm gonna rely a lot on this part, which is the push. So as I get the hand into the good position, I'm really gonna drive that knife back towards him with this. Now, on a single edge knife, this is perfectly fine because this whole thing's flat. And if I need a little more force, I could even come out here, right? And so it depends on how risky you wanna be, right? But I could come out all the way here if I want. And there's uh, Japanese techniques that show pinching the blade like this, so that way nothing could cut me. But I get a longer lever, and the longer lever I have, the, the better it's gonna be. Of course, if the knife was like this long, it'd be fantastic, because I get a full hand here and a full hand here, and I could pull that sucker free. But I can't, right? So, so I'm limited by this. So I get as much as I possibly can in here, even if I need to slide my fingers in between his hand like that. And I've done this many times where you just shoot those fingers inside of there and I can get more purchase on this. And then I make a lot of this because the handle's so short about driving this side back towards him. So I'm really working that. Okay, then a knife that I made um, so I made this knife and I made it with a really tiny handle. So Josh got tiny hands, but still you can see how there's almost nothing back here and there's no pommel protrusions, right? So there's no, nothing for me to get a hold of here. So now I've really got to work another way with the technique. So I get in here and look, I can't get my fingers in at all. Now I've still 
pinch them in there as much as I can possibly get. But I'm not really gonna rely too much on these to pull the knife free. What I'm gonna rely on doing is anchoring my hand to his hand, and then I'm gonna drive this into him as hard as I possibly can. So I'm here, and I'm using this knife, and I drive that into him, right? Now look, I had no purchase on this side, and so I had the same problem that I think you guys are running into, which is you can't pull it out this way, right? Now if I had a knife like this, probably with just this hand, I could, I could pull it out of his, his hand, right? But with this knife, I really don't have any purchase here, right? So all I'm doing is locking into it and then I'm driving the blade from here right at him. Now on a single sided knife, that's super, super easy because there's, there's nothing back here. But even on a knife that, that uh, doesn't have, you know, the whole handle's really, really short, his hand's not gonna be getting cut here, right? Cause he's gonna have his hand where it's not getting cut. So even on a double edged knife with a short handle. So I can put my hand next to his and those are right next to each other. That's maybe a quarter inch off of his hand there at that part. So I can really drive into that to get it to, to force free. So I push and I pull and I'm really pushing this towards him. Okay, now if I cannot get it, and this is one thing that Paul's group did, is they worked this idea of rolling the hand. Now that hurts like hell, right? So Josh definitely had a big reaction. The problem with it is it hurts while his hand is locked onto the knife. And then when I let up so he could open his hand to let go of the knife, he locks back down on it because now it doesn't hurt, right? So then I got to crank into it again. So you have a real hard time making a clean disarm with that. So a lot of times, if I can't get it out, I want to give them enough trouble that they lock their arm out. So let's say I'm working this and he's resisting me. He's going to start straightening his arm more and more and more because this gives him more strength at the wrist. Now that's great for me because that leads into Conran right here where I can go into that elbow. Now from this, he's probably going to do one or two things. Either he's going to jerk his arm down because he doesn't want to get rokeyoed and I drive in here, boom, and I get that disarm. Or as I do that, he won't give me that, so I just work the Rokyo now. So I just conrend it into the Rokyo, right? So the idea here is to drive as much in this way as possible, right? And you see I'm hitting that same problem you guys are hitting, right? And that's a sticky point every time. But when I hit that sticky point, I drive this side right back in towards him, and that's what I'm working. So um, there's the shorter, as the handle gets shorter, it's gonna be harder. As the guy's grip gets stronger, it's gonna be harder. But what you really wanna do is work the blade side as much as you possibly can. If you keep your hand tucked tight to his, it's gonna make it easier to slide up in there. So I'm Christopher Hine, this is Joshua Teehee, and Maya Solana McDaniels right there behind that camera. Thank you very much for watching.